Polarizing online personality Jeffree Star recently appeared on the Going Mental podcast with Eileen Kelly, the creator who describes the show as an attempt to destigmatize mental health while reclaiming her own narrative. And since Jeffree Star is the foremost expert on the optics of mental illness and trying to control a narrative, he was the perfect guest. So uh, take a seat while Jeffree takes us through the story of his past scandals and traumas with a sense of charm and authenticity, measured out in precise dosages like a caretaker who's trying to slowly poison you, while still maintaining a sense of trust so they can steal your medication. However, like the employment history of other antisocial criminals, some things in Jeffrey's timeline just aren't adding up when you look at it top level. So on he goes, filling this entire interview with more pleas for sympathy, forehead slapping contradictions, and honestly uncalled for innuendos than any person should reasonably expect from a podcast about how effective therapy is. But hey, I guess mental health is a journey, sometimes down a dirt road with no shoes on. So if you even ever make it to your destination at all, it will be with bloodied toes and dirty feet. So check in at the front desk and fill out these forms because it's time to get our meds adjusted with Jeffrey in this going mental podcast broadcast of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it down like the inpatient days at your favorite mental institution. I'm destigmatizing it so that we can look at each individual clip and decide, oh no, that's an IOP, and oh no, that's an inpatient day, mama, you're running low. Can you tell that I've been institutionalized? And today, we are looking at this recent interview that I was seeing people talk about on YouTube that I just had to see for myself. And I'm glad I took a look because Jeffree Star is really, in many ways, a master at trying to make himself seem more whole and healed and together than he is and ever has been. At least historically. I can't say I know what his mental state is like now. He does his TikTok makeup reviews. He doesn't get into as much drama as he used to when he was like kind of just always starting fights. But I mean, I don't forget those things and we're gonna remember them together. But first, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up that way you never miss new videos from me but most importantly if you're new to my channel I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here that way you never miss new videos from me I love it that some of you watch without subscribing I love it even more on top of that like it's love with a lovey hat on top of it when you watch the videos and subscribe and click the thing and buy the t-shirt <laughs> I'm just kidding but I do have merch and a patreon but do what you want I'm not here to force your hand I'm not trying to manipulate your brain like Jeffree Star tends to to do. I mean, we've always known Jeffree Star had a penchant for shocking humor to the point where sometimes you're like, you just said the sixth grader thing that had a, a gift certificate to Hot Topic. It's not actually that impressive. And he does the same. You can tell when he feels like he's gonna get a good reaction out of somebody because maybe they seem more shy or soft-spoken. And I think that's his read on our host, Eileen Kelly, today. Although I love Eileen. She does hold her own and I love that for her. She started this podcast after spending five months at McLean Hospital in Massachusetts, which is where I I went to the hospital, mental hospital, when I was 15. Also, famously, the hospital that Susanna Kaysen went to when she wrote Girl Interrupted. James Taylor went there. God, I'm just outing everybody as crazy today. It's okay. I'm crazy too. I'm destigmatizing the word crazy. It's not crazy to have a mental illness. Obviously. I'm on your side, America. <laughs> anyway, I guess Jeffrey's here to talk about his recent experiences with therapy, which he did out of the goodness of his heart desire to write a book. But when we're doing the sound check, we get that trademark shock jock sense of humor that we love from Jasper. Check, check, check. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are ya? <laughs> Today we're reviewing Kylash by Kylie Jenner. I think it just gave me AIDS. <laughs> I didn't know there was a type of AIDS that dogs could get you four-legged bitch. Or maybe you just got it from one of those border collies that you skinned for that wig you're wearing, baby boy. No, but for real. Note that typical shocking sense of humor that I mentioned, which Jeffree Star will swear throughout this interview is laugh out loud funny, even though nobody's laughing out loud except for him. And in reality, Jeffree, that joke is actually being super disrespectful to the many thousands of people who came before you who have had to live with the stigma and the life altering consequences of wearing a mascara from Kylie 
Jenner. All I'm saying is, yeah, maybe Kylash Mascara did give you AIDS. An acronym meaning awe-inspiring definition and separation, which rivals the look of falsies. Yeah, I didn't say it would be great marketing. Jeffrey makes a quick joke about how having that microphone in front of his face is like when he was sucking a last night. It's like, all right, sweetheart. Get ready for school. He's like, my, I don't have a gag reflex. Good luck trying to make my eyes water, like talking about crying. And I'm like, you're making too big of a mental leap. You gotta workshop your fucking comedy. He says he could be a stand-up comedian in this. And I'm like, sweetie, mommy, baby, you cannot. Well, I don't have a gag reflex and I don't usually cry, but we will see what happens today. <laughs> usually I can get it out of people. Mm. A little mace behind the scenes. <laughs> That's sweet of you to offer, Eileen. But I think Jeffrey prefers his taser. Taser. Actually, maybe we should let this play out. Eileen might still have the upper hand. She brought Mace to a taser fight and the typical results of that just aren't as well studied. So we should probably see what happens. It could make for a great interview. I really want to give it up for Eileen Kelly in this interview. She does not seem like a fan, like an overly fanny energy of Jeffree Star where she's like trying to softball him. She's asking pretty straightforward questions and still being completely, I don't believe she's a licensed therapist, but it feels therapeutic, like somebody who has had a lot of group therapy. And I appreciate that she's not leading with her questions and yet still is like continuing on with the line of questioning that many of the people online who are critical of Jeffree Star would ask. Particularly, like, we go all the way back to his original MySpace days. He talks briefly about his music career, all of that, but also landing on like his scandals there where he has leaked videos of him being really cruel to people, yelling at people on the street, using racial slurs and racist language. And I think that Eileen wants to get into the the cause of that. Like, is was that all just a persona that you used because you realized you would get more in clicks and engagement? Because Jeffree Star is claiming he coined the term internet celebrity. And I'm like, I think those are just two independent words that already existed. Do you feel like you were outlandish on purpose because you saw the result that you would gain more followers, more attention? I, I mean, I think when I was already like that. Wow, Jeffrey is so real. MySpace or no MySpace, he was already like that. And by that, I mean this. God. You stupid ape, I'm gonna spray you. Will you beat that <laughs> face? Shut up, you See, he didn't need to play up some racist persona for this 480p video on his digital camera because that racism was already a part of him due to growing up in Orange County. It doesn't take long before the conversation steers into his career path that went from MySpace celebrity to musician. He did touch a little bit on how that transition happened and I was mildly interested, but also I feel like we're really hearing from an untrustworthy narrator. This is like The Great Gatsby. If The Great Gatsby was a big gay, well, I guess The Great Gatsby was pretty gay already. They had a lamp that they loved. <laughs> anyway, I don't trust him. I don't trust his narrator. Would you consider your younger self kind of a bully? Um, no, I wouldn't say that at all. I've never let, I've never like, let's say we're all scrolling right now. I've never left a, a mean comment on someone's page. Okay. That's such a crazy, bizarre concept to me yeah. to like stop out of your day and be like, you're fucking ugly. That's so weird. Yeah, that would be weird for you. I mean, why would Jeffree Star stop at simply calling somebody so ugly when it takes only a little bit more extra time out of his day to use a much more specific toxic insult, such as a deformed rat who can't pay their taxes? Or maybe if he really has the extra time as the CEO of a multi-million dollar makeup brand, he could then spend the next few years becoming righteously indignant about situations he isn't involved in and do things like attack teenagers for tweets that did not mention him and had nothing to do with him, or the concealer and eyeshadow realm that he lords over. Bitch, you're acting like you work in the Thunderdome of Hunger Games when it's actually the Ulta inside of a Target. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm gonna have to take some deep cleansing breaths after this. I don't know if that works. I don't know how to do a cleansing. I'm not Linda Yoga, Linda McYoga, the inventor of yoga. Any sort of bodily cleansing I do needs to feel very easy. And howling into the night is not enjoyable right now. I guess not every healthy habit is as easy and fun to incorporate into my day as Colon Broom. Colon Broom is the sponsor of today's video. With a name like that, you'd think, is it a luxury footwear brand? Nope. It's a high fiber dietary supplement that I've been using to cleanse my body, lower the risk of colon cancer, and feed myself with prebiotics, which is the food that helps the good bacteria in my gut grow and flourish. Just like I continue to grow and flourish with every sentence that comes out of my mouth. The main ingredient in colon broom is psyllium husk, which has been shown to help with problems like constipation, diarrhea, even blood 
blood pressure and weight loss. The fiber and colon broom will absorb water in my body, which causes it to expand and catch unwanted material in my digestive tract, like cholesterol, sugars, fat. It causes my body to absorb them more slowly. It creates a gel-like substance that promotes gut movement, further optimizing the whole elimination process and allows it to be more efficient. So you get to be happier and healthier, like me. Every day, a glass of some delicious strawberry drink will help you lower your risk of diabetes, potentially lower bad LDL cholesterol, while nourishing the good bacteria in your gut and visibly improving the health of your skin. It's like a magic wand for your intestinal tract. You can join Colon Broom for their biggest sale yet and get six months worth of Colon Broom up to 65% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer and use coupon code DORAMIO10 and get an extra 10% off your whole order. Click the link below and get your hands on your discounted Colon Broom while they still have it in stock. Thank you so much to Colon Broom for improving my health and making life more livable. To me, it's like, I get why the, the makeup community embraced such like an anti-hero type of love to hate him kind of villain who says it like it is, but we're talking about goddamn makeup. You're selling makeup and I love makeup. I'm not trying to dismiss makeup, but like, where does he get off bringing in this whole like, oh, you're disgusting and dark and nasty. Like, yes, people do bad things, including him, but he's acting like I came into the beauty industry and people were quaking in their little Balenciaga boots. It's like, I think they were quaking because you lash out and attack people unfairly while also just deflecting every time someone points out your own bad behavior. But okay, I guess you know it all. You're so ready to psychoanalyze all of these people who you barely know. And that's why I psychoanalyze you, someone that I don't know at all, except for that one Twitter exchange where you told me to kill myself. Now I'm blocked though, so phew, dodge that bullet. Basically, Jeffrey is like, I never would just go and attack and call somebody ugly. I'm always just like clapping back at people who come from me. And it's like, there are several instances that you have not deleted that we can see that's not the case. You just insert yourself into shit that had nothing to do with you. And that's not including the like 400 messages that a fan has proof of making you aware of so that you would delete them. So it's this revisionist history that I just find so trademark to Jeffrey's personality where it's like he deleted those tweets. So it's actually not something that you can prove ever happened. And therefore it's not part of the biography on his website. And therefore it's not part of his identity. Just like he also says tragically that his father died of alcoholism and his mother is a recovering alcoholic as well. And that's why he never touched the stuff. Even though again, explain then the tweets and the photos of you holding alcohol or talking about drinking. It's like, you have to choose. Are you being honest now about having never drank in the past and you were lying then? Or you have drank in the past and now you're trying to uphold this narrative that you never touched the stuff up because you're just so like natural and responsible. I would love to know, you know, it's like, that's the kind of that people don't just forget subconsciously. I'm like, there's a cognitive dissonance with my understanding of who you are. I know on some level, you're not being truthful. He's like a full time PR agency for his own pale face. But again, I love Eileen for being like, do you think in your younger years you were a bully? And Jeffrey was like, no, 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 no. I'm actually anti-bullying. I'm actually anti-bullying and I'm never bullied and I'm against bullying. And it's like, even if you were just clapping back, you're still bullying someone when you're more famous than a teenager or a random fan. If you were overly involved with petty and you talked in a way that was intended to make people feel bad about themselves and to put yourself above them. Like, mamacita, this is a bully. Of course, he's the victim in all of this. He mentions like one day he just woke up and two of his biggest friends in the beauty community, referring of course to James Charles and Tati Westbrook during Dramageddon, whatever, where they called him and Shane out for manipulating the situation and bad mouthing each other. It's like, yes, they did mention your name in a negative context, but they didn't seem to say anything untrue true and then he got heated and involved right away and then he got his hand slapped for that so he's like this is just like the they got so threatened by me and they were throwing out all these lies about me i'm like where was the lie which lie particularly that's the other thing they're so vague he never mentions racial slur he never mentions sexual assault allegations of which he has at least one that i'm aware of he's always like oh that thing people made me into something i'm not so now he's saying that the beauty community was ruined as though it's like an actual mausoleum that we could go and pray at before James Charles and Tati Westbrook like bulldozed it with their big dick. 
rocks or whatever. That's how he would put it. It's like, no, you, you left the beauty community because you couldn't take the heat because the comment section was just getting a little too honest with you, I think, at that point in time. Also, he probably wanted to get off of YouTube while his views were dropping. I mean, he says as much. He's like, 30 minute makeup reviews. No one watches them now. No one watches them. Like, girl, maybe not for you. Anyway, he has his own theories about why the other members of the beauty community were so quick to oust him, even though it's not that they were that quick. In the eight years since he started his brand, he's been outed for befriending Rich Lux, this drama channel creator, and then bad mouthing Rich Lux and diminishing the Hermes gift that Rich Lux gave him after Rich Lux left the room. Jeffrey was supposedly telling all of his friends like, you got me the cheapest thing in the store. It's like, you're just that kind of girl who just literally talks as soon as someone leaves the room and it's just all about making themselves seem so rich and fancy. It's like people who are rich and fancy, they don't talk about Gucci all the time. They don't name their dog Dolce and Gabbana. Like you're a tacky teenager who grew up in the OC. You, you're 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 closer to the bling ring than you are to Paris Hilton getting robbed by the bling ring. Yeah, I said it. But you know, there'll be people that say, you bullied the beauty community. It's like, no, I entered the beauty community as this whole new thing. People were fucking shook, mm -hmm. but there's no one like me. So when I didn't view them as competition, I think it made them even more mad. And where do you stand with some of those people? Um, they're all dead to me. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ba, 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 ba. Cue the sniper. <laughs> do you feel um, a little bit of resentment towards them? No. Not or that community? No. no. Oh, okay. Not even the people you just killed with an imaginary machine gun? That response came from a calm place of healing that you cultivated with the therapist? Okay, got it. Jeffrey said, oh, those people who I used to hang out with all the time, who accepted me as the painted old man of their friend group? Well, they're all trash. So I spiritually curb stomped them and now and then I like to wheel their grizzled corpses out into the town square on a wagon, especially to help promote my new revenge blood liquid blush collection. But do I resent them? No, no, I'm too evolved for all of that. People are just like jealous because I just like to be kooky. Like I'm just like that weird girl in your class who everyone makes fun of, even though nobody else in seventh grade was listening to pop punk music until she started playing it on the bus. Okay, sweetheart, fine. If we give you credit for that, can you please stop being mean to the lunch monitors? Those are volunteers. Oh, this is where Eileen brings up Shane Dawson's documentaries. I, I find it so refreshing that she clearly seems to have never watched a Shane Dawson video before the documentary where Shane basically tries to redeem Jeffree Star by letting him retell his side of the story where he's like, all of those horrible things I said online were just this or this reason that they don't matter. It's like, I loved attention too as a teenager and I had MySpace as well. I still knew not to say those words. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, you still deserve the accountability, but whatever. Eileen's not forgiving this, but she is acknowledging that there was a mm, additional side to the story or like additional context that changed the way it sat in her memory, I suppose. Cause I, I yeah. when I was even preparing for this, I like watched a couple of the Shane, da Shane Dawson. video, yeah, yeah, Dawson videos. The documentaries or just like fun videos we've done? No, the, the little, the documentaries yeah. of just saying like, oh, this sound bite got taken but if you actually watch the video or you look at the context of like who I'm screaming at yes. it's like a white person yes. La -la -la. yes it was crazy to be deemed something I'm not over and over and over. Yeah, I mean, crazy implies that it defies all logic. And I think you were called racist because of all of the racist slurs you used. And if it happened over and over and over, it's only because that's how often you would go off on a Snapchat rant and use hyperbole to describe other people as dark, nasty, depraved, disgusting. Hey, weren't those the four shade names in your recently launched Piss Queen color correcting cream collection? Huh, what an appetizing brand you've built for yourself. It's like trying to eat undercooked chicken in the same room where a human autopsy is being performed. Again, it's straight into this victimization of like, oh, the videos leaked of me saying the N word indiscriminately to both white and black people, but he only gave an explanation for the time that he said it to white people. Not that that makes it any better. You're putting it on the internet. It's very hurtful for anybody who watches it to hear who is from the black community and is therefore aware of the historical significance of using that as a slur. You would think this is like a fucking, you're, you're like, you read one page of the book and flip it and then you forget what just happened. I'm not compartmentalizing your excuses as easily as I think he wants us to. That's the thing with this kind of person though. They can easily create compartments for you. So if you want to remain a fan of Jeffree Star, you can easily accept that logic. Cause it's like, yeah, 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 
you. What you said today doesn't account for what you said that was opposite yesterday because they would rather accept you as a whole because probably they have the same kind of hangups and underlying issues that Jeffree Star does and they recognize that issue in themselves. But for others, it's like, remember when you said the opposite two minutes ago? Oh, you'll probably remember a few weeks ago when Jeffree Star was quoted on a podcast. People asked him about his feelings on they, them, gender neutral pronouns. And he said that they're stupid. It's because people were in quarantine and we were all bored. So they invented this new thing, even though you dumb bitch. I remember people using gender neutral pronouns from when I was a freshman in college in the year 2009, just because you were not aware of it, although you should have been because you literally marketed yourself as an androgynous alien, <laughs> just because you were not taking it seriously and it hadn't become so politicized by the right. And let's face it, Jeffree Star living in Oklahoma with his millions of dollars and his big businesses that bring lots of money to that economy, I would be shocked if he were not registered as a Republican. Those people just love Love to keep the rich richer. And he has this taste of a conservative to him that just like, oh, make me sick. Give me the ick. So anyway, Jeffrey got read in the press for this statement about they, them pronouns being basically made up. And then when he got backlash, he was like, how dare you? I employ five transgender people on my company, along with a smattering of black people or people of whatever color. And it's like, sweetheart, don't start listing numbers, especially when they're not enough for two hands. You gotta understand that's so offensive. Five trans people, wow. Dylan Mulvaney can go f off then. I guess you're the new hero. So first of all, it sounds like tokenism when you mention numbers like that. Second of all, people who identify as gender neutral would fall under that trans umbrella. You can't say like, well, if you're a trans man, then just say you're a man. If you're a trans woman, say you're a trans woman. Well, for many people, they, including someone who knows what the word androgyny means, gender doesn't fall into a binary. So like it wouldn't be appropriate for them to identify that way. It's also just like, what the f People just need to call people by the pronouns that they want. It literally does not take any more effort. Oh, I saw this conservative YouTuber. I think his name was Dipshit Neckbeard. He was like, don't you ever try to change my language. It's like, bitch, your language is not even f 12th grade reading level. Don't ask me what to do. You can say whatever you want, all right? But if you're not gonna respect the way that I want to be called, then I'm not gonna respect the way that you wanna be called, ass crack McNeckbeard. You look like you fucked a fucking sheep for breakfast. Oh, I hate these fuckers. I fucking hate these fuckers. And Jeffree Star doesn't fucking understand the harm that he's causing the very trans employees who were, have been fighting for acceptance for their whole life. If, if you can invalidate non-binary people, you're essentially giving other people enough reason to invalidate transness in any form. It's so disgusting to me. And I know that's a Jeffree Star term, like, disgusting, but it is disgusting to hear this influential person make such uneducated statements that he himself has contradicted in his own branding, in his own life, in the years past. Like a lot of people are like, well, what does androgyny mean? Now, androgyny, I think, is the definition of Jeffree Star. It's like gender ambiguity can be found in makeup, fashion, sexual identity, gender identity, anything. Okay. I keep calling you she yeah. on accident. Okay. Like, Andrew was like, wait, is Jeffrey or what's happening? I'm just Jeffrey. So if you look at me and you're like, damn, honey, yes, like she, everyone calls me he, she, whatever they so want. So that's fine. Yeah, I'm an alien. Every pronoun is okay. Every pronoun. Okay, yeah. great. I'll think on some. And then go out into Wyoming and be like, come shoot a f***ing cow in the face with me. And then jerk off onto its corpse. Oh, you like makeup too? It's vegan. Like you don't even make sense as a person. I don't like it when people pretend to be activists or groundbreaking in some way when actually, no, I don't think Jeffree Star, you ever were groundbreaking. I don't think you were ever paving the way for gay men to wear makeup or for people to present with any sort of non-conforming gender. I think you just liked being different and you liked scaring people and shocking people and being the weird one on the internet and now that what you do wearing makeup being a b is not all that exciting or new in today's day and age you want to be different by being contrary to that it's like pick a goddamn side mr lifeboat jumper anyway let's see what he says about his quote on that podcast you were saying they them pronouns are stupid yeah. and then people immediately associate that with being transphobic yeah i don't know why we're not working on normal things like leaving women's rights alone, more gun control. As a gun owner, there's not enough gun control, but we're focused on 
he, she, they, them, and all the wrong things. That seems kind of subjective. Like, I think you're focused on all of the wrong things whenever you walk into a Louis Vuitton and head straight for those logo printed bodysuits that were designed for rich old ladies in Beverly Hills. Or maybe like a model skeleton from the science lab who just recently got access to their trust fund. Disputing people's pronouns like Jeffrey is currently doing, it's a trans right issue and a trans right issue is a woman's right issue. So don't then throw it back and be like, we need to be focusing on a woman's right to choose what she does with her body. It's like, that includes trans women. And if you are not okay with hateful, violent, or invalidating speech against women or trans women, then you should be equally as distressed about that language towards non-conforming or non-binary people. Because if you're not, if you're allowing that, then you're, you're opening the whole community up, no matter where they fall on the gender identity spectrum to risk of like danger and harm and murder. So don't try and talk, talk, talk and change the subject to gun control when we know full well that you have the Barbie pink barrel of a rifle all the way up inside of your boy hole right now. Oh, boy hole. Isn't that the name you gave to a pastel shade in your pink palette from last summer. We're getting some really great cross promotion here, Jeffrey. You should thank me. Anyway, Jeffrey then goes on to talk about his new life. He had to leave the beauty community because he was being persecuted for his terrible behavior. And now he's in Casper, Wyoming, where all of the cattle want to f him. And he's just recently opened, not at this time, but present day, he had just opened his Jeffree Star store in Casper, Wyoming. I'm sure this was a great tax incentive for him and a great way to make the town of Casper, Wyoming indebted to him. They probably love him now that he got all of this tourism and this because if, if he opened this store thousands of people flew in for it and they I presumably will be all year that's restaurants that are going to be visited hotels that are going to be stayed at airports that are going to be used like he's infusing the economy a relatively small population's economy with a lot of tourism money when he does this so i'm not surprised that he did it and it's good for his taxes it's like yeah he's making a house for his yak meat business and his makeup business which to me is just like whatever i don't even are you an actual serial killer so you can go into the store and you, it's a full jeffree star store so you can go in and buy a steak and a mascara in one transaction finally the streamlined shopping experience we've all been waiting for way to find a boy hole in the market and then fill it jasterisk oh by the way i could already buy jeffree star makeup and weird meat in the same transaction at my local tj mac as long as they have at least one of those summer sausage gift sets in stock jeffree then gets into how if he weren't doing all of this he would be a stand-up comedian because he's funny and I was like you're not that funny actually I've never laughed at a thing you said I made a TikTok about it I'll put it right here I'm the queen at clapping back I, I have a big mouth I love being shady and at the end of the day if I wasn't doing all this I'd probably be a stand-up comedian because I'm he really gets off on his own humor. I'm like, you sound like the same you did when you were 19 and 20, like just trying to be shocking, but knowing where the line is a little bit more, but not the line of like makes me laugh and cringe, just like the line of where I don't want to actively send a threatening letter to your home, which I would never do. I don't have any stamps here. So he's like making all these sexual jokes and <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm very sexual. Like I love, you know, the NFL players want to me, the Kanye Wests want to me. I'm like, yeah, sounds good. All these people who are too big and apparently in the closet to ha provide any proof that they've never met you, weren't interested. And also it's so fucking basic for a gay man to be like, straight guys love me. It's like such like a dumb flex. Like, I don't care. There'll always be straight men who are actually secretly bisexual or queer and want to have sex with a man on the down low. That doesn't make you special. It just makes you rich and manipulative, most likely. How do you coerce them? How do you coerce that NFL? player into wanting to f you Skeletor. I would love to hear it. You are Casper the unfriendly ghost. There's no way out of all of the gay men they could pick from a f***ing lineup in West Hollywood that you would be at the top of the list. He wants to just build this fantasy where he's like, oh, I got the big, tough, strong, burly football player, but I'll never tell who it is because I'm so cool. But he wants me and he loves my frail body. It's like, I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. And even if it is true, it's not impressing me. That don't impress me much. Anyway, he keeps talking about sex and oral sex. And Eileen is like, so this humor that you use, is it to like cover up your deep emotional wounds? And he's like, sex, sex. Lord. Oh, yeah. I could, yeah, I could take about 12 inches, and then after that, you gotta call someone else. So. <laughs> this is not using humor to cover everything up, something that you try to work on or something? No, I'm just such a Scorpio. Like, if there was a dick in this room right now, I'd suck it 
this instant. Yeah. She was asking you about if you want to stop deflecting with humor, Jeffrey, not about how desperate you are for oral sex, which I think we already knew about due to your sexual assault allegations and the taser you allegedly used to commit them. I love when she was like, so are you going to try to work on that part of your personality, which is clearly putting people at an emotional distance from you? And he was like, no, because I'm just, uh, I... he mentions astrology at that point, which only adds to the bewildering nature of the response. I'm not really an expert on all of that. Scorpios, sound off in the comments. Do you feel the need to instantly suck a d whenever it enters the room? Do you even bring that fact up when someone named Eileen asks you about something else? Do you plan on continuing to talk this way on Gen Z podcasts well into your 40s? Cause I gotta be honest, it's kind of hard for me to picture that in a way that's sexy. Same with the mental image you keep trying to put in my head of you gruesomely feasting on looking like the head vampire from 30 Days of Night. Jeffrey Star seems to think we all wanna ha imagine what it's like when he has sex. I'm like, I've already fallen into a pit of bones in a Halloween store, okay? I get the fear. Then uh, Jeffrey goes into his gun collection. He loves guns, you know this. And also, I, apparently in Wyoming, you don't need to lock your guns in a safe. And that's when Eileen is like, but you just talked about gun control. And I mean, this doesn't feel completely illogical. He has a stance. He's like, I believe you shouldn't be able to just go into a place and buy guns same day in some states, while in others you need a psych check and blah, blah, blah. You know, we should make it as hard as possible for people to buy guns so that we can be stringent with who gets them. Which, sure, I guess that's one very Fox News related solution to the fucking open shooting epidemic that we live in in this fucking hellhole of a fucking country. Although others would be like, that doesn't help ghost guns or unregistered guns coming from overseas or 3D printable guns or the fact that a kid could figure out how to get into a gun safe if you're cabinet is unlocked. So she's trying to make the point where she's like, what, how do you feel safe? Like having guns just out in the kitchen, 27 of them, he says, where a dog could step on one, which is my first thought too. Or like your kid could find one, or since this is a mental health podcast. So yeah, when you do come over, there's about six loaded guns in the kitchen. I always thought, I always thought they have to be like in a lock box. Uh, in California and maybe New York. What if you have a suicidal friend? Well, then I guess you won't have one any longer soon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, dark humor. We're coming back 2023 and suicide's not funny because my dad killed himself, but my joke's funny. You heard him. His joke's funny, right everyone? Just say yes, his taser is almost done charging. Clearly, Jeff has had a certain level of charisma that lets him get away with all of these paradoxical statements on everything from gun safety to emotional maturity. And part of that charisma, I can tell, is knowing how to work a room. He might say something that's crazy upsetting to clearly the host, but he can also instantly tell that the joke has made Eileen too uncomfortable to respond. So he instantly reacts by being like, oh, dark humor, love it. Let me fill the whole space with my voice. He jumps in and just instantly starts trying to bury that stunned silence under his own boisterous laughter, then follows it in the same breath with a vulnerable statement that pseudo explains why he's allowed to make that joke, and then follows it up with a quick reaffirmation that the joke was in fact funny, hopefully convincing all of us that, oh yeah, the room was filled with laughter a minute ago, I guess we're all laughing. No, it was just him. It was just Jeffrey. Everyone else wanted to cry. And no, I'm not a body language expert, although I did have an equally as manipulative model skeleton standing at the front of my science class in high school, intro to biology with Professor Boyhole. So I recognize the behaviors. So Eileen is like, wait, so like, why can't you just like lock them up if you're really that afraid of an intruder on your house, which Jeffree Star really feels like he's like a mob boss of baked highlighters, I don't know. And he's like, no, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. I don't have time. Someone breaks into his house. He has 30 seconds to react. You think you're going to be able to run to your closet, unlock your box, load the bullets. You're already dead. What? The killer's already in your house finding you. You're stabbed. Like, it's just, no. What about a taser? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh. Oh, damn. Did Eileen honestly not know about the taser accusations when she was doing her guest research? Or is she just like the shadiest therapy type podcast host in all of Spotify or wherever you download podcasts? Jeffrey thought he made it through this whole interview without any specific allegations being mentioned. But then Eileen said, don't tase me, bro, right under the wire before the end credits. Did you hear Jeffrey when she said taser? He said, oh, no, no, tasers. I don't have a taser, a taser, taser. He was gooped. You can see that he was gooped. He was like, is she, does she, is she coming for me or did she just say taser? Because a taser is close contact. The ones that shoot out are for police only. But he can also tell you which states have a second amendment loophole that would allow you to procure one 
one if you have an uncle on the police force and you steal it from him. Okay, one last plug for the Jeffree Star brand in the form of a new jingle I wrote for him. He'll zap you near, he'll zap you far, so lock your doors, it's Jeffree Star. And that's all we have for this shocking installment of Jeffree Star Kind of Sucks. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, uh, let me know what other influencer podcasts or content uh, you want to see covered here next. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications. That way you'll always be the voice to know when I'm locking up my gun safe and I'm shaking the whole house down for mascara samples. Also, thumbs up if you want to see more like this. I've got merch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive benefits like bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for zapping me near and zapping me far and going mental with me. I will see you next time.